let's take a look at the dictionary data structure. This is a dictionary called people. We have pairs of keys and values. The name Kevin is a key and the occupation, teacher, is the value that goes with it. Olivia is a key and lawyer is the corresponding value. Notice that the key and the value are separated by a colon and each key value pair is separated by a comma. The whole dictionary is enclosed within curly brackets. To retrieve a particular value, I can specify the name of the dictionary and the key, like this. The value that goes with the key Beatrix is author. Beatrix is an author. So what's going on behind the scenes? When this line of code executes, the dictionary needs to be stored in the computer's memory. For each item, that is, for each key value pair, a memory address is calculated from the key. A memory address is a number, and each location in memory has one. So, for example, the key Kevin might result in the number 61. I've just added together the positions in the alphabet of each of the letters in Kevin to get 61 to illustrate the principle. In reality, Python's calculation is a little more complex than this. Exactly how the calculation is really done and what the number really is doesn't matter to us here. What's important is that whenever you perform the same calculation with the key Kevin, you will always get the same number. The key Kevin, along with the value teacher, are then placed next to each other in a block of memory which they've been allocated somewhere else. The calculated address is also stored along with the key value pair, for reasons I won't go into here. The address of the location at the start of the block is put into the location whose address was calculated. This redirection is necessary because a single memory location can only store one item of data. So now we have a memory location, 61, that contains a pointer to the key and the value which are somewhere else in the memory. When Olivia and Lawyer are placed in memory, the address of a memory location is calculated in the same way but using the key Olivia. The key Olivia will result in a different memory address to Kevin. Using my algorithm, that will be location 68. The key Olivia and the value Lawyer are then stored somewhere else in a reserved block of memory, and a pointer to these is put in the location that was calculated using the key. The same process is applied to each key value pair until the whole dictionary has been loaded into memory. When we retrieve a value using a key like this, the same calculation is performed again with the key. The result of that calculation is the address of the memory location which contains the starting address of the data that we want to fetch. Computers are very good at performing calculations, so retrieving a value if you know the key is very quick indeed. By the way, the calculation applied to the key is called a hashing algorithm. The number generated by the calculation is called a hash value, and the data structure underlying a Python dictionary is called a hash table. Now I should say that this explanation is very much a simplification. I've already told you that the hash function used by Python is more complex than the one I've described. Furthermore, the amount of memory allocated to a group of hash values and the number and size of the memory blocks allocated to the key value pairs will vary according to the amount and the nature of the dictionary data being stored. Also, it's possible that two different keys might produce the same hash value resulting in a so-called collision. These collisions need to be resolved in some way, which is actually why we store the hash value along with the key and the value. But that is another story. 
Fortunately, for most programmers, exactly what's going on behind the scenes is not vitally important to know. The Python Memory Manager does a good job for us. What you should appreciate, however, is that retrieving a piece of data from memory is extremely fast, no matter where it is in the memory, if you know the memory address. When it comes to dictionaries, memory addresses are calculated using keys. Keys that mean something to us, and therefore keys that we know. So now let's take a look at some of the facilities available for working with a Python dictionary. I'm going to create a new dictionary containing makes of cars. This time I'm using numeric keys. These are integers. Nevertheless, when the dictionary is saved in memory, each of these numeric keys is used to create a hash value, and these data are stored in a hash table. I can print the entire dictionary like this. You can see the data have come out in the same format which I specified them. We've already seen that I can print an individual item, like this. I need to know the key of the item. I can also print an individual item using something called the get method. I'm still specifying the key, in this case to get the Audi. Notice I'm using standard parentheses this time, rather than square brackets. If I try to get a car which is not in the dictionary, I see the message none. I can customise that message if I want. Your car was not found. If I want to add a new key value pair to an existing dictionary, I can do so like this. So there's my new dictionary, which now contains a Volvo, with a key of 6. Alternatively, I can add a new key value pair to an existing dictionary, like this. My dictionary now contains a Lada. You don't see many of those these days. If I want to add several new key value pairs at once, I can create a new dictionary and then update the existing dictionary with the new one, like this. I'm saying that I want to update cars with more cars. If you need to, you can create an empty dictionary like this, and then you can add items to it later. There's my dictionary of toys. You've seen how to merge two dictionaries together using the update method. I can also do it using the merge operator. This feature became available in Python version 3.9. Now I have three dictionaries, my original dictionary called Toys, a dictionary called More Toys, and a dictionary called All Toys. I merged Toys and More Toys using the merge operator, which is just a vertical bar. If I want to remove a specific key value pair from a dictionary, that's easy enough. So there's All Toys. And there is all toys with the yo-yo removed. Another way to remove an item is to use the pop method. This does two things. It takes the item with the key of 5 and copies it into X. It then removes that item from the dictionary. So this is the value of X. And this is what the dictionary All Toys looks like now. And while we're talking about removing items from a dictionary, if you want to clear the entire dictionary, you can do it like this.
So as you can see with the clear method, I'm back to where I started. Here's a summary of the commands you've seen so far. Before you continue, I suggest you pause and give them a try. Now let's take a look at what else we can do with a dictionary. I've got a new dictionary here which contains pets. Take a look at the keys. You can see that I've attempted to duplicate pet 3. When I output the entire dictionary, I can see that there's no fish here. When the dictionary was being created, the fish was stored in a particular memory location, which was calculated using the key PET3, but then this was overwritten by the bird, because the bird has got the same key. You've already seen that I can assign a specific item to a regular variable. I'm outputting the cat, but notice this time I haven't taken it out of the dictionary. I can also test to see if a specific item is in the dictionary. Pet1 is indeed a dog. I can also create a dictionary in which each value is a list. Let's just remind ourselves about lists. This is a list of dogs, and this is a dictionary containing lists. Take care where you place the square brackets and the curly brackets when you're doing this. I could leave it like this, or perhaps it makes more sense if I change the names of the keys. Let's see what happens when I print out the entire dictionary. Pretty much what I typed in when I created it. Now I'll specify a particular key. There's a list of cats. And if I want to specify a particular cat, I can use the index number of that cat within the list. So there's the Bambino. A Bambino, by the way, is a hairless cross between a Sphinx and a Munchkin. I bet you didn't think you'd be learning about cats in this lesson. And there's the Budgie, which is in the third list of my dictionary. Why not try creating a dictionary of lists yourself? Perhaps you could have lists of pets like this. Or maybe you could create a dictionary in which each key was the name of a country and then each list contained information about that country, such as the capital city and the population. There are a few more commands available for working with Python dictionaries, which I'd like to show you. I'm using a dictionary of fruit this time. My dictionary is called fruits, and notice that the values are apple, orange, banana, etc. And the keys this time are fruit A, fruit B, fruit C, and so on. This is much simpler. There are no lists here. If all I want to do is get the keys out of this dictionary, I can do it like this. Notice that this output is preceded with dict underscore keys, dictionary keys. If I want to get the values, I can do it like this. And again, the output is preceded with dict underscore values. I can also get the key value pairs like this. This time I'm saying dot items. If I need to, I can create a regular list of the keys.
you should recognise the list format of the output here. And if I want to iterate through the values, I can use a for loop. There's each value in the dictionary, each on a separate line this time. I've used the variable name x, but I could have used any variable name. Perhaps v makes more sense, v for values. I can iterate through the keys and the values like this. Notice I'm using fruits.items this time. I now have a way to check if a key exists in the dictionary using an if statement and the in operator. There is an apple. I can also use if within to test the values in a dictionary to see if there's an apple. I should say though that I'm now losing the main benefit of a dictionary because I'm not using the keys to access the items. Essentially, I'm performing a linear search. And there's one more thing I'd like to show you, and that is how I can create a new dictionary from a list of keys and a list of values. Here's a list of people's names. And here, is a list of their salaries, how much each of them earns. I'm going to create an empty dictionary called employees. And now I'm going to zip the names and the salaries together. And there's my new dictionary of key value pairs. To summarise then, dictionaries are ideal for storing data when fast retrieval of individual data items is important. In a dictionary, each item needs a unique key that can be used to reference it. A key can be pretty much anything, but usually it's a meaningful string. For example, the key could be the name of a product sold in a shop, and the value could be the amount of that product in stock. Or a person's name could be the key, and their phone number the value that you want to look up. Since the value can also be a list, one key can be used to store several pieces of information. For example, someone's address, their occupation, salary, and so on. Here's a summary of some of the commands I've used. Why don't you give them a go yourself?